Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Andy Arnott with Amy Wees. And this is Seller Roundtable number 60. And we're super excited to have Andrew Helms on. Welcome, Andrew. Hello, hello. Happy to be here. So uh, Andrew is a uh, video master. I actually kind of bumped into um, his work on uh, LinkedIn uh, with a LinkedIn um, influencer. And uh, she, he had done a video with her that uh, was super epic. If you have not seen like Dollar Shave Club, that's what it reminded me of. And Dollar Shave Club, if you don't know, they, they had this one YouTube video that pretty much um, catapulted them to, uh, to riches and famed them pretty quickly. Um, to me, it's like one of the best uh, kind of uh, marketing, um, you know, funny videos uh, ever created. Uh, and then I saw Andrew's uh, video for Shay and I thought it was uh, very similar in terms of being informative, but also kind of hilarious and, uh, and, and witty. So thanks so much for being with us, uh, Andrew. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, like where you're born, where you live now, past jobs, college, school, kind of how you ended up where you are right now. Yeah, man, you like, you hyped me up. I hope I can live up to this Dollar Shave Club video hype. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see, where to start? Where, where was I born? I was born in Las Vegas. I was adopted at a very young age, around two, by my own family. So I quickly moved from Las Vegas to Kansas. So I grew up a country boy, basically, in a city. So not really. Um, uh, grew up in Kansas. I've moved all over. I've lived in Iowa, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, uh, Virginia, DC area. Uh, and now I'm landed in my home base in Southern California. Um, so that's kind of my my history of tracking across the country, you know, will I live in all 50 states? Nobody knows, maybe someday. Uh, so actually it's kind of funny because a lot of, a lot of people, you know, hate change and they don't ever want to move or like, you know, they get kind of get stuck in their home base and they're like, this is where I am. This is where I want to be. And I'm almost the exact opposite. If I live in any place too long, it's like, man, what's next? I've been here forever. Like, let's go. So like, I'm like two, two years into something and then I like, I want to move on to the next thing. So my, my professional life kind of follows suit where, you know, I don't really like doing the same, same thing too long. And one of the cool things with video is it's just such a complex space that there's always something new to learn from the technical side, from the strategic side, from how do you implement videos? How do you get people to pay attention? Like there's just so much that I could never actually learn it all. So it's the perfect space for me to play in. That's awesome. So, um, in terms of like your video uh, background, did you go to school for that? It was it just a passion kind of how did you, uh, you know, get le learn to, to do it? Yeah, well, I mean, pretty much the way that anybody can learn how to do anything, which is to just go out and do it. So I went to school for my undergrad for creative writing, um, which was connected. I had no idea that I was going to be doing video or anything of that nature. When I was doing that, I thought I was going to, you know, write novels and be the next Stephen King. Uh, then I, you know, went into the work, work environment after that. And I kind of popped around and I got lucky and I found some things in a design type of space. And that kind of piqued my interest about this whole video thing. I, I think it's actually really interesting looking back at the video content that I was producing then just, you know, on your own as a normal person back then. And it was just like the worst man, like super grainy from a technical aspect. And then two from the aspect of man nobody's gonna want to watch this junk basically that i was putting out back then and it was all personal but uh, you know it kind of piqued my interest and then when i went to um another company and i had the opportunity to actually pick up a video camera and leverage it to basically leverage it in a learning and development type of aspect then i, I took my chance at it and i will tell you i've actually saved that video because it is so god awful and i spent so long on it that it's actually hilarious right and and so every now and then I bring it back, like, y'all remember that first video I ever pro professionally produced? Like, here it is, man. This was the start. And it, it, total garbage. But I went from there. Uh, I got my master's in instructional design and technology. So I started learning a lot more about how the brain works. Um, and then I went to another uh, company. And at that company, I also said, man, you know, that video I produced sucked. But I actually kind of really enjoyed that process. So I want to keep going. And so I was taking online courses. I was looking for opportunities within my role to actually start dabbling in video. And I just went from there. And then eventually I had this idea of like, 
I should start my own company. I should just go out and do this on my own. Like screw waiting to get approval from the company that I'm working at to do a video. I'm just going to go out and find other people to pay me to make videos for them. And so it just, you know, escalated from there, picked up little things here and there. And then, you know, here I am today. Epic. Fantastic. So in terms of, of video, how long have you been doing it for? And, and uh, I love that you kind of mentioned how, like when you started, you sucked because so many people don't realize that, right. They want to get into something and be awesome at it right away. Right. It's just like we deal with mostly, you know, people who sell on Amazon and e-commerce, uh, you know, Shopify, things like that. And, you know, people always give up so early on because they fail, right. And they, they fail and then they're like, Oh, this is too hard. Or I don't know how to do this and things like that. Where, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the picture, but it's like the, um, the guy digging, you know, the cartoon of the guy digging and one guy like keeps digging and he hits this huge thing of gems. And then the other guy's digging and he's like a foot from it, but then he gives up. Like, that's kind of what I feel like there's, you know, in terms of, you know, e-commerce and, and kind of anything that you're doing. So like, how did you get past, uh, being sucky? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting perspective. I mean, I would, I would, I would even take that analogy further to say sometimes you're digging in one direction. It doesn't mean that you should stop digging because you're not finding anything in this direction, but maybe you change directions or you pivot just a little bit and you start digging in a new direction, right? And that's how I feel like everybody's life, everybody's career goes, whether they realize it or not. It's when you get to the end and you see where you're, where you're at that you can actually start to look back and say, man that very first thing I ever did out of college helps me to do what I do today as, you know, a massive multimillionaire CEO of my own company, right? All of this builds up to make you able to do whatever it is that you need to do or that you want to do with your life. So I always approach things that, you know, even if you hit a stumbling block or a roadblock, if you keep persevering in whatever direction you decide to persevere from there on out, you're going to get to the place where, things make sense and they work for you. Yeah, I'm getting absolutely. interrupted by my door. But yeah, it, <laughs> no worries. It's, I mean, it's, it's exactly what happened to me. I mean, I was laid off right out of college. It was a crazy story. Right out of college, I was working at a uh, sound studio. So actually, this was my first foray into multimedia development and I was being taught audio engineering. So I was mixing and mastering uh, commercials for like Victoria's Secret and things like that where these would be like training videos, but they made them in English. And now they got to share them with their French companies. And so we had to dub over French and put it out there and, and do that kind of thing. So I was working here. Great experience. My first really professional job, but it wasn't paying the bills. And now that I had this bachelor's degree, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out and make some real money now. So I apply. I'm applying for everything. So I don't really know what I'm going to do with this creative writing degree, right? Like everybody's like creative writing. You're dumb. You're never going to make money doing it. I make more money than anybody that I know anywhere in my entire life right now out of my friends with my creative writing degree. So it's all about following your passions and things like that and it'll work out. But I applied for two jobs. One job I got almost immediately. I go in, I'm working there for three days. This other job that I actually wanted a lot more that I didn't think I was going to get calls me in three days into my new job and says, we'd love to hire you. So I actually have to quit my job. That's a good job. Good paying job. Three days, worst experience ever. I'm terrible at those kind of things. Go work at this new job. I get a ton of experience, but four months in, the company is sold to another company. That company comes in and says, you're way too overweight here. We have to cut like half the staff. It's like, I think there's like 200 people that work there. hundred of you are gone. So I'm out, right? I've lost the first job. I've lost the second job. I'm like, oh shit, like here we are, right? Like life has just come at me real quick. I'm married. I've got two kids. I've got a third kid on the way and I'm jobless now. And I thought like, this is the worst thing that could have happened to me. Fast forward. Just, you know, maybe a month later, I'm getting hired by this company out in DC, making like double what I was making at this company, which led me to the next company two years later, where I'm making double again what I was making at that company, right? So it's when you're going through that moment and you have that pain, you may not, you may think, man, if you're living in the moment, this is going to be so painful. But if you got that long-term vision and you know where you're going and what your, what your guiding principles are and what you want to be, that's going to see you through. And then you realize man, it's so lucky that I got laid off. Like I would not be where I was today if I hadn't experienced that pain earlier on. I love yeah, yeah, that so you have those stepping stones, you know, that <laughs> kind of led you to it. But let's take a step back. So for our listeners who don't know who you are and what you do, tell us a little bit about what you do on the day-to-day -day and kind of your claim to fame as a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I'm, I'm a very fractional person, uh, in the sense that I do a lot of different things. So 
One, I work at a company called Capital Group. It's a financial services company, wealth management company. And for them, I'm in a emerging leadership program. So I rotate every six to eight months from one department into another department, uh, essentially just long enough to get good at what I'm doing. And then they kick you out and say, okay, on to the next thing. So I've been doing that for a little over two years now. It's actually, I'm coming to the end of that program. So I have to figure out what I'm doing from that point on with that company. And then outside of that, I've owned a uh, video agency for the last three years. And that agency has been focused on, on producing a lot of corporate content, same kind of content that you've seen me produce with Shea Robottom. But actually this year I, I transitioned that company away. And this is where I was telling you, like I do one thing too long and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, and I transitioned that company to actually now be focusing on short films. So now I'm actually going through the stages of learning how to screenwrite, you know, still taking all those things that I learned. And a lot of people would go, man, producing corporate content and writing short films would be completely different. But actually, you learn a ton from doing the corporate content where you're squeezed on time. How do you capture people's attention? How do you still tell a story that's compelling enough to get people to watch all the way through? How do you hijack people so that they want to pay attention to your content and like your brand and all that stuff? All of that feeds into how do you write a short film that people watch, right? Like it all ends up going that direction. So that's where I'm at now. And in fact, I already know the next step after this too, I'm going to produce uh, short films and then I'm going to move on to feature length films. And what's funny is, you know, the feature length films, acting, directing, all of that has been childhood dreams. When I was a, when I was a child, I used to think I could do that all the time. High school, college, I was like, um, shit, this is never going to work out. I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be Steven Spielberg. There's like way too much stuff in between here. I'm just not set up to do it. And now that I've gone through all of this stage in my life, I'm actually at the point where I go, oh yeah, actually, you know, I, I know people who do this. I have connections that can help me learn how to do this or to put me in touch with the right person when I'm at the right stage so that I can take that next step with them. So it's like, it's all a journey. It all works out. It all gets you to where you're going anyways. And I love how, you know, even though you have this successful, you know, film company, you're also doing some, you know, a program at this finance group because, you know, why not learn every aspect of everything that you want to learn? You know, it's, it's awesome. There's, there's times when I've considered even going back in, you know, working in retail and some other things because there's certain aspects of my journey of entrepreneurship that I still want to learn. And I think sometimes the best way to learn it is to go to work and, yeah. you know, they already have the processes in place. Why build it myself when it's already built and I can learn it from that aspect. So I've considered going back to work for different areas of things that I want to master. So I love that, that you're taking that aspect of things. Yeah. Now, in terms of film, you know, our, our listeners are e-commerce and many of them have their own brands or they're selling other brands. But the bottom line is we all care about sales, right? And we know that video really can play a part in our sales and, you know, the virality of our products. And so, so many of us know the importance of hiring someone to create an amazing video. Um, tell us about your experience with video and e-commerce. Yeah. So video and e-commerce. Well, let me, let me split them up. Cause I know sometimes people can get, you know, what, 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 what often happens with people when they're hiring somebody to make a video for e-commerce is they haven't actually figured out the e-commerce side of the business yet. And so they hire somebody to handle the, the video side of it. And if that person is so new that they're just taking the job because it's a job and they don't have any other options, um, or they've never been trained on the actual strategy of how to put together a video that hits all of these different psychological triggers that you need to hit with people when you're selling something, then it flounders, right? And so then they go, man, I, I spent, you know, maybe a lot of money, maybe a little money, but it was a waste, right? It was a bust. I didn't make any money back on that. So I'm, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to go back to some tried and true text, you know, image, copy, stuff like that. So what I say is, first of all, you have to make sure you have somebody who has either been in the game long enough that they've produced successful content and they have examples of that content that they've produced, or they've been trained by people who've been, <laughs> been in the business long enough so that they know how to do that. Um, and so what you're saying case, is don't hire anybody from Fiverr, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you hire somebody from Fiverr, what you need to have on your end is a strategy. So you could totally hire somebody from Fiverr, but you have to go, Hey dude, I want a video that does this, 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 and this. Here's the script. 
I just need you to go out and bang out this animation content or whatever they're, they're going to put out for it. If you want to hire somebody, I mean, you know, and, and even getting to the dollar sh uh, shave club reference, I don't know if, if the audience knows Travis Chambers, but Travis Chambers is like, you know, in my, in my mind, the God of the dollar shave club, he, he takes the, the influencers from YouTube, from Instagram, TikTok, and he puts them into content that is funny. And he can take, he can make a video that's five, six minutes long and it works because it's so damn funny that people just pay attention to it. And he knows how to put all of the triggers in there, how to, how to make sure that your product is hit in all these different angles so that people walk away, not only having been entertained by what you just showed them, but also going, that sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to check that out. And I've bought things before from watching his videos, even though I know all of the triggers that he's putting in to make me want this product, because actually he's so good that he can pick and choose which products he's working with. Right. So like, also he's tying his brand to this product to say, Hey, because I'm producing this video for them then you know that I've actually vetted it. I've asked all the right questions to make sure that this product is sellable and that it's not going to be a bust because I don't want to tie my brand to something that's, you know, false advertising doesn't do what I think it does. So first and foremost, make sure you have the strategy. In fact, you can have the strategy with absolute crap video content and it'll work because the strategy is good. So, you know, maybe try something out yourself first, even if you don't feel super confident in your content, this is where you can go out and find somebody on uh, Fiverr to edit it and go out and shoot it. Like get, get your buddy, get somebody who works in your company or do it yourself and record all the little sound bits of your video and then go out to Fiverr, pay somebody 200 bucks to edit it together, then throw 50 bucks in an ad and see what it does and see how people respond to it. If it does really well, then pay somebody the big bucks to make the, the professional version that you're going to shoot out and share to the world and then just make that money back incrementally. So there's can lots you, of different ways to tackle it. Can you give a quick overview on, uh, because I know I'm pretty clueless on this, like, do you mean like storyboarding or like, like how should somebody plan out that type of video? Um, so, you know, first and foremost, when, when I'm working with the client on figuring out what that video is going to be. We start going into like a deep dive into the company. So we're talking about what is it that your company provides people that they can't get elsewhere? What is it about you that's unique? What questions do people ask you all the time? What problems do they have? You know, what are all these solution pieces? Um, what are their objections? Those are really huge because somebody may watch that video and go, yeah, this sounds great, but X, right? And if we can get that X, that is, you know, hitting the majority of the audience, whether it's two or three of them, then we put those into that video, then the objections are gone, right? They're like, okay, I can try this out. Um, and then it also is different depending on, are you selling a big ticket item that's, you know, $5,000? Are you selling something that's $10, $10 right? It's going to be a little bit of a different strategy, but we will storyboard if we're getting to like the Dollar Shave Club level. What I first and foremost start with, with almost every company, because it helps them in so many different ways, is what we call a video business card. And the video business card is, is you know, exactly what it sounds like. It's your business card and video form. So the conversation that you would have while you were networking and talking to people, that conversation typically takes somebody 20 minutes to get through all the details. It's like who we are, why do we exist, why did I start this business, all the things that make people like you. And then what is it that you offer? How do you offer it? How is it different from other people that are offering it? Um, and then like a call to action, like if somebody, okay, if somebody's really interested, what do they do now, right? That's your bread and butter that can be fit into so many different strategies of your content. Uh, and you see it all the time. You probably just don't recognize it. So when you see an ad on Facebook and you click over and on that next page, there's a video there. That video is basically the closer. That's your video business card. So when you make that one video, even if you do it on your own and you follow all the processes, then you can route all of your ads to the, a page, right? The copy on the page may change depending on what the product is, but this piece stays the same. So you're basically building one video that works for you forever. And I mean, you know, they usually last two to three years until your, your business is kind of evolving or changing for whatever reason, and then you need to update it. But beyond that, this one video does a lot of work for you. So that's the one I always start people with. And then you can even route like your text and your image ads to this video, see how this video converts, make sure that this video is converting. Then once it is, then you can start spending big bucks on ads that go out and pull people into your funnel, basically.
That's awesome. I love I love how you just ended with funnel because I was just about to say uh, the book that I recently listened to that I got a lot of value out out of was uh, Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets. Like he talks a ton about um, you know how when he does his webinars and things he throws all it like they literally sit there every time they do the webinar after the webinar they they like take an inventory of objections that people have got you know given them in the chat or they come up with their own and then they go and redo and they redo it over and over again and, and they do it for like a year like the same webinar for a year but then they iterate on it and throw in every single objection everything that they've come up with as they do it. So by the end, there's literally, like you said, you know, it's like the dollar shave club or, or, you know, any of those, I think he did squatty, uh, squatty potty too, right. With the unicorn, uh, pooing the, the, uh, the rainbow and all that. Like, so by the, by the time you watch that video or that webinar or whatever, like there, there's literally nothing, there's no roadblocks for you to buy whatever is being sold. Right. I, I absolutely uh, love that. And, and, you know, getting into the uh, mindset of that is, is all very interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it all plays in it. And when you do that exercise, I, I've read that same book. And when you do that exercise to go through and say, okay, what are my objections? And you start being honest with yourself. And a lot of times people aren't honest with themselves. So if I do that deep dive conversation, I could ask those same questions in a, in an online form. And I do it all the time. Actually, I'll, I'll do the form first. They'll give me kind of like these, what I call bullshit responses. It's what, like what they would tell people if they had two seconds to tell somebody something so that it might be, you know, um, you know, my objection is this, this product's too expensive. Well, you know, this product is actually not expensive. If, if you think about the fact that, you know, this other company has a product and their product is two times as expensive. That's like the surface level thing, right? Like people aren't going to care or respond to this. What they really want to know is why is this so damn valuable? Why is this the thing I should buy and not that other thing? And if you can't prove that this is valuable, maybe I'll spend two times the money because this guy has, right? And so, it's like really diving in. So if you, if you go through an exercise of, of reading something like Expert Secrets and you force yourself to go through and say, okay, what are my objections? How do I answer this objection? Not only are you helping yourself if you ever get into a live conversation with somebody and they have that objection and, and giving yourself the, the ammunition basically to be able to respond to it, but you're also designing your content better. And if you get into a conversation with somebody who runs video ads, they'll be able to ask you these questions and you'll be able to respond and give them really good information so that when they design the video for you, they answer those objections and there's no reason it shouldn't work, right? If it works without the video, then the video is just amplifying it. And that's what somebody who's really good at the video strategy is looking for. They're looking for a company, somebody who's already figured out the strategy piece on how to sell this thing, because then what they do is they know how to make the video sell it even better, bigger, more. Something that we teach in, you know, listing optimization when we're teaching copywriting is problem solution. What does their life look like now with your product in it? Right. And if you can communicate that better than your competitors, you're not, you don't spend the time explaining why your competitors are less. You spend the time focusing them on why they need to buy this product and creating doubt in their mind about your competitors right? When they move on to that next product listing on Amazon, you want them going, wait, but this one doesn't have the thing that meets the need that this other one did, you know? So in so many people just skip that in their photos and their videos, they skip it. You know, they do these boring photos that don't, that don't have any, you know, any explainer in them, any feeling, you know, buying is such a psychological process. And it's so interesting when you see people change out their photos to explain that problem solution, what does their life look like now? When they change out their photos, their conversions immediately increase, no matter the text. It's really, really awesome, you know, something to see. So along that line, you know, um, if you have to do a short video, right? A short video that is going to sell your product. Like on Amazon, you know, we're not going to put a, 20 minute video out there, right? Or, or, I love the business calling card because I think it's so important to build your brand off of Amazon. But what would you recommend in terms of somebody making a short video for a product, for example, on Amazon, where we're trying to get them to buy by watching this video? Yeah. So I'll, I'll disclaimer by saying I've never made a video for Amazon. So this is all just off the top of my head and may not actually be the best thing. So take it with a grain of salt. But what I would do is I would design a customer persona that is my best customer. Like if I, and, and I don't know how you would get this information if you're just selling online, but you know, 
some sort of polling? Are you going on, on online or are you even going to some sort of networking event and asking people about this type of stuff? But figuring out who is most likely to buy this product. We do this exercise with people and we usually do this more on the, the high ticket items. So this is where I'm like grain of salt. I don't know how applicable this is to Amazon. But what we do is we say, who do you never want to work with? Who are your worst clients? Like if you actually buy them, they're the ones, you know, coming back on Amazon to leave negative reviews because. Yeah. And that's the thing I was going to say, we don't, we don't necessarily have customer information per se, but we do get reviews that tell us we get Q and A's on our listings and we get reviews that tell us who that person is and why they bought this product and why they love it. And then we get the bad reviews that, you know, are just like, dumb, you know, (laughs) but we have that to go off of. So I love that best customer. The one that leaves the good reviews that says, Oh, I love this. I use it for this. I use it for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I would, I would say, okay, we don't want to attract this customer anymore. The ones that are leaving the bad reviews. So let's figure out what that is and not put that into the video. Right. Like we don't want to attract that person to buy this product. Then go look at the reviews of the people who are loving this thing and figuring out why they're loving it and then design your quick video based on how much ever time you have to really promote the top one, two, three things, whatever you can get into your time frame of your video that says, these things are amazing, come check this out, right? That's what I would do. I would focus on what do people love about this and let's just blast the love out there and get those people to buy. Got it. So focusing on that customer, those few customers that really getting in, attracting more of them, their personality, why they love this thing. So if they love your, your, um, your balloons for, you know, birthday parties for kids, then, you know, your persona is the mom who's, you know, so happy throwing that birthday party and you want, you want to kind of attract that. Um, you don't want to attract the one who's like, Oh, this is too expensive or this is stupid. Right. Right. I want- <laughs> it's more about like selling the experience that they're going to yeah. have with this product. Exactly. I mean, and, and you can do that in the photo text or video, but going into that world. And that's why it's really awesome when you have a customer persona. And even if you, you build that out. So, I mean, you know, say you're, you're selling something and, and you notice that there are a lot of people in the comments and you would, you would call them, you know, collectively like soccer moms or something. Right. So then I would build that into the video. I would show somebody who is living that persona of being the soccer mom, taking their kids to and from these different events and make the video from their perspective so that the person watching it goes, Oh, that's me. I'm going to love this product. Right. That's what I would do. That's amazing. That's really great feedback. And I think that a video like that would actually do quite well on Amazon if you were, because we see a lot of like unboxing kind of videos, but I think if, if you were to take it more from the perspective of a persona, um, that that would be really, really valuable. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, SellerSEO.com and AmazingAtHome.com.